the seminar in Senate Room. Uh, and we were joined by a part of their journalist and author, Marcus, uh, um, and his, his contention was who we are talking to, please. Okay. Yes. Christine is here. And why don't you introduce yourself? Well, I think that's fine. Just other than we can be we'll introducing you. We'll be introducing ourselves when we ask questions. Perfect. That's great. So, uh, Christine, you can fill the main there from uh, about the seminar. You were there present all the while, and she will pop on it with questions, which she answered as well. So, let me start with uh, Telachi, and then we'll move on to Christine. Yes, it won't. Uh, very easy to seminar, so to say, because the subject itself, of course, brought out lots of emotions. The question was, is Pakistan a victim or a sponsor of terrorism? And obviously, all the speakers came forth with the view that, first of all, the violence taking in Pakistan itself is a very sad story where lots of people are losing their life, but the divisions are not only divisions within the society, main sects like Shia and Sufi, there are many further divisions which are causing this kind of mayhem. Has a has a very strong imprimatur of the ISI, but moreover, the violence that Pakistan itself is enduring uh, is, is a consequence of Pakistan's proxies turning its guns and suicide bombers against the state. So I think that, that I have a very different um, understanding of the consensus of the speakers on this important issue. The military attache at the Pakistan Embassy. Um, this is what they routinely do when this topic uh, is presented. I myself, I'm actually, it's actually a good thing I wasn't there because I think I would have uh, reacted more strongly to that fellow uh, wherever I have gone in London, any places in Europe here in Delhi that promote their side of the story. So it's very difficult for me to conclude that some of the things that were said were not just planted fictions because some of the things that the audience said were, were just so preposterous that I, I couldn't even take them seriously. Uh, with the
is that you stop actively supporting these militants. And uh, Dr. Shaw and I, we spoke at length about this yesterday. The space, for example, that Jamaat al Dawa has, the Haqqani network, even Lashkar Ajangvi slash the Mishnah in Pakistan, the space for these groups has expanded, not contracted. Um, Hafez Saeed, his role as a political moderator has expanded, not contracted. So it, it, at a very first step, we want the state to stop actively supporting these groups. The second thing that we want the state to do is to actually begin denying space. That's media space, that's actually physical space. We want them to close down sanctuaries. And then finally, we want them, and, and this is actually you know, an interesting question, what Pakistan needs is a DDR program, which is basically a program to um, disarm uh, and to reintegrate these fighters. All of, not all of them can be shot, not all of them can be jailed. Some of them have to be reintegrated in the same way that the UN had early successes in Afghanistan. And if the, and if the Pakistanis are not willing to undertake these steps, then we have to follow through um, and declare them to be a state-sponsored terrorism. The United States heretofore has been very unwilling to do this. I think it needs to do this. If you talk to anyone on the Hill, um, if you talk to people at the White House, although this argument is getting quite exhausted um, in the Pentagon and in the intelligence agencies, they will say that if we do this, so first of all, I think it's very important to emphasize that, as I said before, as Christine has emphasized yesterday, uh, encourage, patronize, continue to support and provide sanctuary to other groups that carry out their uh, proxy wars in India and Afghanistan. Uh, so first of all, uh, the uh, political forces, so the military is now targeting the Mahajir Qaumi movement, which is, you know, a violent organization and has a serious problem. But uh, is that really the existential threat to Pakistan? Not really. I mean, um, the army, the rangers are just getting them in Karachi as if they really are, you know, destabilizing Pakistan. They have picked up politicians from the PPP under charges of terrorism, attaining and abetting terrorism, when all the terrorists that actually harm both Pakistan in the long run as well as its neighbors have the, the freedom and the space to operate uh, openly uh, without with impunity and so there's really no willingness on the part of the state or the Pakistani military to be more precise uh, to do anything about it and they, they, they have this belief that as Christine said because they have nuclear weapons because they've gotten away with this previously uh, that they're too important to be uh, you know uh, sanctioned or to be dealt with harshly, that they'll continue to uh, continue to do this and will not pay any price for it. And so that's their assumption and so far they have been uh, quite successful in terms of uh, continuing to uh, you know, uh, follow these policies without, without having to incur any consequences.